innovation is a major force in economic growth. It has already significantly improved our daily lives through better healthcare, safer transport and a more competitive industry. Welcome to Real Economy in Sweden. I am Sasha Vakulina and as I came to the Museum of Technology in Stockholm, Guillaume de Jardin went to Seville in Spain to see an interesting example on how innovations including artificial intelligence and robots are helping us and how they can boost competitiveness and growth. Yes, indeed, Sasha, I'm here in Sevilla, the city where centuries ago great masterminds like Averroes once shaped philosophy and science as we know it today. But now scientists are working on developing technology for the future. Such as in this project that designs autonomous drones with arms to inspect hard to reach pipelines and industrial plants. One of the main advantages is that this human can be uh, seated on the ground, uh, controlling the drone remotely, and uh, he's not at risk uh, being at height. Okay? And uh, the other one, of course, is that we are able, in certain conditions, to perform this operation faster than the traditional methods. This technology was developed in partnership with Seville's university and the European Commission. The Commission providing the funds and the university the brains in the move to boost European AI and find future real-world applications. We include in the project uh, many students. That is very good for them because he has to work in uh, very advanced technologies and also this is some the, uh, a first contact with the, with the job market because uh, we are all, always in contact with all the partners that are from uh, several countries in Europe. Artificial intelligence means potential growth. But job-wise, according to some studies, it means that most jobs will be somehow affected. 5% are bound to be totally unavailable, while two positions in three has 30% of their tasks potentially done by machines. That raises ethical questions as well as concerns over labor needs. When we talk about the impact of AI on labor markets, we should not talk about jobs and occupations, but of tasks. Some tasks can be taken over partially by artificial intelligence. On the other hand, most jobs also have uh, require tasks that require skills that are very, very much human, that require social skills. So we have to make sure that our workforce today actually has the skills that are inherently human and that complement artificial intelligence. Indeed, I tried to test Pepper the robot's social skills and asked about its vision of the future. Hello, Pepper. Hello, Hugh. Nice to meet you. Are you going to steal my job? I'm here to serve humans. If there are no humans, there is no me. The project in Guillaume's story is among those that benefited the most from the EU support. But European companies are still spending less on innovation than their competitors. In 2016, EU's private investment in AI stood at between 2.4 to 3.2 billion euros, compared to 6.5 to 9.7 billion euros in Asia, and compared to 12.1 to 18.6 billion euros in North America. Here is a crash course. In April 2018, European countries signed a declaration of cooperation on artificial intelligence. That stated that the EU should increase investment in AI research and innovation in both the public and private sectors by the end of 2020. 1.5 billion euros for the period 2018-2020 under the Horizon Research and Innovation Programme, plus 20 billion of combined public and private investments. To establish a solid base for AI in the future, more investment is needed after 2020. 20 billion euros per year of combined public and private investment and 1 billion annually through Horizon Europe and the Digital Europe programme. But why is this investment seen as vital? The reason is about two-thirds of Europe's economic growth over the last few decades has been driven by innovation. country is the EU innovation leader. 
that is Sweden. And this is where I went to meet Dora Polfi, co-founder and CEO at Image Labs. She's creating tech programming tools for teenage girls, bringing coding to smartphone. Sweden is the EU innovation leader. What do you think makes this country so attractive for businesses and startups like yours? I think that whole ecosystem supporting individuals with ideas is what makes Sweden really an innovation hub. I think it's also that whole mindset in Sweden is very entrepreneurial. There is a lot of uh, collaboration between small companies and also large organizations and there's also a lot of collaboration um, in governmental projects so we recently received a, a, a grant from from Vinova, which is a Swedish government agency. How important is education for innovation and for this boost to innovative economy? Education I think is where it all begins really so that's a, there's a basis for it all and um, there's many reasons but I think one particular thing is that Many people would think that innovation means somehow being like a genius, you know, just coming up with a great idea. But really, in reality, it's, it's uh, being able to combine available knowledge and things that maybe work in one context and applying them in a really smart way to another context. When it comes to the tech sector, women make up only around 15% of jobs in the European Union. I truly believe that technology is the future, and I think a lot of us do. From that kind of logically follows, if women are not as actively involved with technology as men are, that women are, do not have the equal chance to contribute to the future. And that's something that I really want to change. So I think we need more women who have technical backgrounds and who are in technology in order to be able to, to shape the future of tech and, and businesses and be able to innovate on that end. Dora, we asked you to bring a real object to illustrate innovation for growth. Right. What is that? It's a quirky little box. It is a, it is a prototype <laughs> for what we are building. It says, it says hey. It does. Yeah. In, that's the high in Swedish. <laughs> and so um, this little box is what I believe can change the future for women in tech. So this is a prototype for uh, a programmable accessory. Okay. And I just um, coded directly from the phone. Thank you. Thank you. Education is key to innovation and innovation is key to improving competitiveness and therefore economic growth in Europe. That was Real Economy on Euronews. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.